Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our last session for today. It's our pleasure to have you all here to attend the professional skill course. I'm Rua Ahmed, the session moderator for today. I'm also a student at FUE University and SPE treasure member. Special welcome to the president of the SPE, Mr. Ahmed Negm. Thank you, Rua. Good evening, guys. It's a pleasure to speak to you once again. Let me say what a privilege it is to speak to you, representing my beloved future university petroleum department, and the hopes we all share. Therefore, on behalf of future university and SPE FUE chapter, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to Dr. Mustafa Youssef for joining us along the three sessions, wishing him always the very best of success. And it goes without thanking you, thanking you, our distinguished attendees for participating with us. We hope our upcoming activities find you safe and sound. Now I back again to you, uh, Roa. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. It's my pleasure to welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Mustafa. Dr. Mustafa, please, you can go ahead sharing your screen. Okay. And let me share my screen. Okay, thank you so much, all. And one more time, thank you for SPE and the Future University in Egypt. And I'm really happy that we'll be presenting today part three of the series. And I hope you find it really connected to what we have covered uh, last week and yesterday. So let me start with sharing my uh, screen. Okay, so again, today is the third part. And let me go to, yeah, let me just start from. Okay, so as you can see, today is part three. And let me just say very briefly, so after we uh, have started with the first step, which is how to write an email, how to make it formal, how to write it in a business format, and maybe you apply for a job or try to send an employer. Second step was how to prepare your CV and get ready to present it to the HR person or to the employer to get to know more about you. Today we're going to talk about the last step actually before getting a job, which is sitting for an interview and the basic or fundamental skills on how to pass an interview successfully. Okay, and as usual, let's start with our agenda in order to see uh, how much we're going to cover today and which topics we're going to get. So the first point is why interview, why an interview is important and what does it add to the previous process of CV writing and uh, writing a business email. Pre-interview, which is what we should do before sitting for an interview, during the interview, and the post-interview, which is anything we can do after the interview, so let's start with the first one. So why interview? What makes an interview really important? And how does it add to the whole process of applying to a job? First point is it's detailed presentation and the clarification. And I guess we mentioned yesterday that a CV doesn't have everything about you. A CV is just uh, a two paper long presentation of yourself. So we said that it's like a big business card, but it's not everything about you. So what you are going to write in the CV is actually, like we mentioned yesterday, uh, uh, the uh, skills that you have or uh, your qualifications when it comes to certificates, when it comes to degrees, skills, and hobbies. But when you sit for an interview, you explain those skills. You give examples on them. You try to demonstrate your powers. Of course, a CV is not enough to mention examples and to mention everything about you. And you shouldn't do all of that in a CV. 
CV is just some titles or headings for the HR person to scan quickly and get a brief idea about you, who you are. And uh, after um, passing that part, or uh, an HR person likes your CV, thinks that you are meeting the minimum requirement for the job, or the requirements they are asking for, they are going to invite you for an interview. And maybe uh, just something to mention before being in detail with uh, interview is uh, probably if they like your CV, they will send you an email, like an invitation to sit for an interview. And actually what you should do, like the first impression about you when you are going to respond to the email, and maybe you're going to use uh, the business email skills in that part. So let's say you uh, sent an email to the employer uh, expressing your interest in a certain job. Then they ask you for the CV. You try to send your CV or you attach your CV in the email. And uh, uh, then they liked your CV. So they sent you like an email inviting you for the interview. So let's say they sent you uh, the email on Saturday morning. What, when you are going to respond and when you are going to reply. So maybe the best idea is to keep checking your email regularly on a daily basis, especially if you are applying for a job. So you should be expecting uh, emails or calls at any time and try to respond quickly to the email because the first impression about you is from that part that you responded quickly you didn't take more than like 48 hours to respond to the email, which means you are active. You check your email regularly. Uh, you are attentive. Uh, you are interested. You are waiting for the job. So try to respond to the invitation quickly. And of course, when you sit for the interview, as we have mentioned in the first point, that it's a chance. It's a great opportunity to give examples on your skills talk more about your educational background and demonstrate what projects and what kind of work you have done through all of the years of your experience. And uh, another point or another function for the interview is that testing what has been mentioned in the CV, because not everyone is honest, not everyone writes correct things in the CV. So maybe if you have mentioned a skill, they will, are going to test, do you really have that skill? So maybe they are going to ask you some questions. How do you think you have that skill? They are going to ask you to give them examples, to give them a situation. Uh, uh, let's say you had experience in a special field. You wrote in the CV that you have experience in, uh, let's say, uh, computer programming. So maybe they are going to ask you technical questions about what it takes to be a good computer programmer. So it, it's really easy for some people to write things in the CV because at the end it's a piece of paper and it doesn't really talk and you can't ask a CV some questions. That's why they are going to invite you to test if you really have or if you can really do the points that you mentioned in the CV or not or, or uh, are they all lines? So again, it's a chance to demonstrate that you really have those abilities. Another point is testing attitude. And the interview does not only test your uh, abilities that you have mentioned in the CV or your skills. They, all, they also test your attitude because for sure you can't really add something about your attitude in a CV. We don't have a section in the, in the CV called attitude and the behavior and the manners. So they are going to ask you some questions to get to see your uh, response to certain situations. If you are in certain circumstances and the conditions, how you are going to deal with people, how we are going to solve the problems, how we are going to make some certain decisions, so your behavior in general, what kind of personality do you have? What kind of person? Are you an angry person? Are you patient? 
Are you, do you get nervous and stressed uh, under any conditions? Uh, are you smart? Do you like working in a team? Do you like being isolated? So maybe some elements about your attitude and your behavior in general. And just to give them an idea on how probably you are going to deal with people and how you are going to work in the environment and the dealing with your colleagues. Are you really going to be demonstrating the skills that you mentioned that you have, or you are going to be a troublemaker at work? And for sure, if you passed the interview and you, you went to work and you started meeting problems, it means it's a big loss for the company because they spent the effort and the money on hiring the wrong person. So they need to make sure that you are really the excellent choice for the job and they are investing the effort in the right person. Another point is that it's a two-way conversation, which means when you send your CV, the HR person gets to know many things about you, but maybe you don't know lots of things about the job. So it's a chance for a two-way conversation. It's a dialogue. So they will be asking you questions, getting to know more about you, getting to know clarification and things in depth and in more detail. But again, it's a great chance for you to get to know more about the job, to get to know more about the company, to get to hear from the HR person, what about the environment and how it looks like and the nature of work, uh, how much stress can be expected. Um, in which uh, field you are going to um, get in contact with people and get in contact with customers. What kind of customers do they have and, and so on. So that's why it's two way. You send your CV, they get to know about you, but maybe you don't know lots of things about them. But in the interview, you can ask the interviewer to get to know more details about them. And we learn how you can ask in the interview, not just answer questions. All right, so let's go to let's move on to the next part, which is pre-interview. What I should do before the interview? Let's say I have an interview next week or in three days. Can I invest that time in getting prepared, in getting ready? Can I do anything to be more confident? And let me be honest with you. I know every person. If you are going to ask about interviews uh, for anyone, and you're going to ask them how I can be good in an interview, they are going to tell you one more word, be confident. But I know, honestly, it's easier said than done. It's very easy to tell a person, be confident. Okay, how can I be confident? So I know that is the tricky question that everyone is asking. We know that being confident is extremely important in an interview. But when I go to the interview, I feel shaky, and I feel stressed, I feel nervous, I get sweaty, I don't know what to say, uh, I get confused with the information I'm, I'm giving. So how I can be confident? Let me try to give you some tricks here on uh, how to be confident. Because I believe that no, no person is born confident. Being confident is something like a skill. It's not a skill, but let's say it's somehow similar to a skill that you can learn. It's an ability that you can manage and you can control. But let me give you a quick example. Like if someone is angry and he's an angry person, he can't manage his anger. We have some steps and the tricks on something called anger management, which is how to control your anger. So exactly the same way, how to be confident. If you follow some steps, what I can say is that your confidence will be much better. They will be improved. You will be in a better situation than without preparation. So let me share with you some of the things that can make you much more confident. First of all, number one, 
rule number one before the interview, research well. And what I mean by research well is that you should get as much information as possible about the job and about the company or about the case, the institution or the organization as much as possible. And uh, let, let me just try to give you a quick uh, example. Let's say I'm trying to apply for a bank. Let's say, for example, HSBC. And you would like to be uh, in the credit card department or a bank teller or in the customer service. Maybe if I am a, a hard interviewer or a silly interviewer, I will ask you the first question, which is, what is HSBC? We know the four letters, H, S, B, and C. So I will ask you a question. What, what is HSBC? What, what, what does it stand for? If you are a very interested person about that bank, you will know, or probably know, what are the letters, uh, where they are, as information about them. If you are a normal person who is not uh, very much interested, you will not be able to give an answer. And that will be like question number one to test if you're really passionate and it's like you, you had a dream to work with that bank or you are a normal applicant. So HSBC stands for Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation. So it doesn't even have the word British. So it tests here your research about the place and information that you got about. And uh, some of the tools that you can use to get more information about the place is from the website. And for sure, all companies, all big companies and international companies have websites. So you will find lots of information on the website. We even find the app or a place on the website called About. And under About, you will find many information. So you will find when they, uh, when they were established, uh, when they were founded, uh, maybe uh, something about the managers, something about their profiles, the areas of work they work in, uh, how many customers they serve every year, their branches, their headquarters. So all of that is very important information and you will be able to find it easily from the website. You can use the official website you can use LinkedIn, you can use maybe YouTube, so you can type the link in the YouTube, maybe you can get some videos, some advertisements that they created, so it would give you something about their projects, uh, how they work, their strategy, their marketing campaign, how they target their customers, and so on. And maybe you can ask people or colleagues or people you know who work at that place. So I'm sure everyone of us knows a person who works at a bank. It can be any, any bank. So you can ask about, you can ask them, how does it feel to work at a bank? What are the basic requirements? What do they ask in the interview? How I can prepare myself? So they will be the best people to ask because they will give you very specific detailed answers or detailed help on how to pass an interview for that special place. They know people inside, they know how those people think, how they um, uh, interview applicants. Maybe they know something about the HR mentality. So they will be really the best people to ask. But just in case you don't know anyone in that company, you can certainly find information on the website. And you need to study that information before you go. So uh, if I were you and I would like to work at a bank, I would like to know before I go, how many branches they have got? Where is their headquarters? What about their philosophy? How many customers do they serve every year? Something about their development and progress. So when I go to the interview, 
I feel like I'm not a new person to the field. I feel like I have some background. I have some information. I can deliver that information to the interviewer and maybe ask him information, ask him questions about those information. So to give him the impression that I'm interested and I would like to know more, which is very positive. So again, th that tip or that point increases your confidence, makes your confidence much better. Second point is expect what will happen. So again, before the interview, expect what's going to happen in the interview. What kind of questions they will ask you? So of course, the questions that are asked at a bank are different from questions that are asked at school, are different from questions that are asked in a club. So each field has uh, its own questions and its own theme. So for example, I work as a teacher, so I know uh, uh, HR people in universities or schools, what they ask about and what they would like to test and what they are looking for. That's totally different from HR people in an engineering company because they are looking for other skills and they have different nature of questions. So you try to expect what's going to happen to you, what they are going to ask you, and try to get a piece of paper. That's what I do personally. I get a piece of paper and I try to write down everything that I expected to happen. Like if, if, I met, if I'm going to meet an angry HR person, how I'm going to deal? If he puts me under stress, how I'm going to manage my stress? If I am uh, talking to him and he doesn't listen to me or he's not looking to me, am I going to be angry or am I going to be patient and control myself? So try to have uh, an expected scenario. And what I would say, expect the scenario to be bad. So that makes you actually more prepared. So don't think about that you are going to go there and everyone will be helpful and they will be smiling and everything is easy. No, think about that everything will be hard or maybe they will ask you silly questions. Try to imagine if you are an HR interviewer and you are very silly, very hard, very tough. What are the hardest questions that you will ask. Write them in a piece of paper and try to answer them. So put yourself under the hardest conditions. It's like an exam. You don't expect easy questions in an exam. You always think about what are the hardest questions that I can find in an exam. So be trained on them. And of course, if you are trained on what's hard, you will be able to deal with what's easy. So that is the point. Develop a plan. Develop a plan, which means, again, what to imagine how you are going to impress that person that you will meet. And maybe you don't only have one interviewer. Maybe you have three. Maybe you have four. So sometimes they are a panel of interviewers. We call it an interview panel. Interview panel is not only one person who interviews you. They are more than one person. And of course, they ask you lots of questions from all sides. And each one tries to give you a score. And at the end, they try to get the average of the score. That's like a strategy in HR to have a more objective decision or a fairer decision. So instead of just only one person taking an impression about you, if they are four, that will be fair because each one is different from the other. You have maybe two male interviewers and two female interviewers, a young person and an older person. So they try to have like a collective impression about you. So try to develop a plan. How you are going to impress them? What kind of information you need to tell them about you? How you are going to give them that wow impression? And imagine yourself in the situation. Try to have that kind of brainstorming. Again. So imagine uh, uh, where is the place? 
uh, try to search for the HR interviewer on LinkedIn. And that's actually one of the best things you can do before an interview. And that's why I told you yesterday, please try to create an account on LinkedIn. So if you are applying for a place and you write the name of the place HR, you will find some accounts for people who work at that place. So at least you know how they look like. It makes you more confident. It's better to know the person that you are going to meet than meeting an unknown person that you know nothing about. You don't even know how they look like. You don't know if he's a male or female. So that makes you again more ready, more uh, satisfied. It makes you cooler. And a very important advice, please, please, please sleep well. I know, again, it looks like uh, a very uh, simple comment or a very easy thing to do, but maybe sometimes people uh, feel stressed. Uh, they keep late at night on that day. So just deal with it as if it's an exam. If you have an exam in the early morning, you shouldn't sleep late at night. You should sleep well, sleep early, because you don't want to go to the interview in the morning rubbing your eyes. Like you don't want to go with red eyes and you keep rubbing them before you go to the interview or in front of the receptionist or in front of the interviewer. Because that will give a very bad impression about you. That you are not ready. You didn't sleep well. You are a stressed kind of person. Uh, and so on. So try to sleep well. It changes the chemistry of your body. So scientifically speaking, it makes you more confident. That's a science, a pure science. It changes the hormones of your body. It regulates your hormones, regulates your body chemistry. And it makes your psychology much more settled, much more confident. So please try to sleep well before the interview, because interviews are usually at nine o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock, or maybe if you have a very late interview, it would be 11. I have never ever sat for an interview, which is uh, maybe after 11 a.m. So usually interviews will be from nine to 11, which means it's early and you can go to a place which is far from your home. So it's better to be comfortable, physically comfortable. All right, and next step. So now we are ready. We researched it well. Uh, we got information. We tried to expect the questions. We tried to put ourselves in the situation. Uh, we slept well, and now we are going for the interview. So during the interview, while you are inside, what I should do, and I try to divide it into three parts because maybe we have things, lots of things related to the core of the interview, what's happening inside the room. And let, let me show you how I divided them. So we're going to have things that you can do in the early morning. On the spot basics, and questions and answers. And honestly, I try to divide those parts from my experience. Again, uh, maybe I'm not an HR person, but I have been to different places. I've been to different institutions and I got quite some experience on how people deal in the corporate life and in the professional life. And Again, those are from my point of view and what I know from people, what I know from my HR friends, what's globally recommended, things you should do and things you shouldn't do. So I try to get you like a collection of good things you should uh, do or some uh, advice that you can follow in order to pass an interview. And the first part of the early morning, I didn't try to edit to before the interview. It's really before the interview because it's in the very early morning before you go for the actual one. But it's very much related to the interview itself. That's why I kept it here. So let me show you what I mean by things to do just before the interview, just before it, in the very early morning when you 
wake up in the morning. First thing, wake up early. So you don't need to see early the previous day and wake up late. You need to sleep early in order to wake up early. And that's pretty logic. And the logic behind it is that when you wake up early, uh, you go into the mood of waking up uh, before you go to the dog, so uh, before you go to the interview. So if you have the interview online, you should at least, I would say, uh, wake up at maybe 7, maybe 6.30 from my point of view. Just to wake up early, uh, uh, brush your teeth, wash your face, get ready, uh, dress well, and we are going to talk about how you should dress and regulations with the dress code. And just to put yourself in the mood, just to start up, activate yourself, stimulate your mentality. So you don't need to turn on yourself just before the interview. You need to turn on yourself quite early. So when you go, you are at your best attention, at your uh, best performance. Second one is, I would say, maybe that's a personal uh, advice. Maybe you, are, you, you have different opinions about it, but I would say avoid drinking coffee. If you sleep early the previous day and you wake up early, you are going to be at full attention. Especially maybe if you're going to take a shower in the morning, which is very, very refreshing. And again, it decreases your stress. It regulates your physical hormones, which scientifically makes you more confident. So one of the advantages of waking up early is that you can take a quick, nice shower before you go to the interview. So you feel very, very refreshed, super refreshed. Why I would say avoid drinking coffee? Because drinking coffee in the morning gives scientifically gives you faster heartbeats. It gives you higher blood pressure which in conclusion gives you more stress. And that's scientific. That's experimented and it's a proven. So maybe you think that drinking coffee is okay or it puts you in a nice mood. Yes, it puts you in a nice mood for a very short time, but it gives you high blood pressure and the quicker uh, heartbeats, which can make you stressed after one hour, one hour and a half, which is actually the time of the interview. And uh, put yourself in a good mood. So maybe you can listen to nice music in the early morning, eat a piece of chocolate, do something that you love. So I mean, just to try to temper yourself, comfort yourself, feel it's easy. Don't take it as if it's a life or death situation. It's not a Sanawaya test. It's not something that if you fail in it or if you do not pass it, it is the end of the world. No. Everyone I know, including myself, have failed in interviews. No one is born excellent in interviews. It comes with practice. It comes with time. It comes with experience. It comes with skills. So don't expect to go for your first interview ever and to be super. That's like... 95% uh, uh, it's unnatural, it's uncommon that someone is super in his first uh, interview. So, I mean, take it easy, don't have it too, don't be too hard on yourself. My recommendation again, arrive at least 20 minutes early. And the people would tell me, don't you think that 20 minutes earlier are too much? Like maybe five minutes early, maybe 10 minutes, but why 20 minutes? I myself, I go to interviews 30 minutes before the interview, not only 20. I, I would say 30, but I would say the recommended is 20. Maybe I'm extra careful. So why 20 minutes at least early? For different reasons. Let me again, like share my experience with you. If you are, if you did not work before and you don't know how, what to do in the interview and maybe you are a little bit stressed, you are not very much ready, 
it's a new experience for you to so your natural resource. And let's say imagine they tell you that to have an interview in a special place, let's say in company X at 10 o'clock. All right. So you go just before 10 o'clock, five minutes before 10 o'clock. And when you go to that company, you discover that the company is huge. You don't know where is the interview. You don't know the office. You don't know which floor. The elevator is busy. The elevator is crowded. Many people around you. You are not sure who to ask. You ask at someone, he gives you wrong information. Please go upstairs on the third floor. You go to the third floor, they tell you, no, it's not here. Please go down to the first floor. You go to the first floor, they tell you, no, it's not here. It's a different department. Please go to the other building. You go to the other building, you find the elevator crowded. So all of that actually are going to make you much more stressed, extremely stressed because you are trying to run. Of course, it's only five minutes before the interview. You don't have much time. So you are going to run. Elevators will be busy because it's in the early morning. So probably all of the company workforce will be there. People are working. People are going up and down. Uh, you don't know what to do. You don't know uh, where it is. You are uh, stressed because you might be late to the interview. They might call your name or the receptionist or the secretary might be trying to find you if you are late. And you are sweaty. The shirt gets out of your trousers. The tie is not neat. You have sweat around your neck. Your hair is not nice. So all of these factors, believe it or not, they affect you. They affect you emotionally. They affect you psychologically. And they, they have an impression on the HR person. Maybe they are extremely small details, but they count. They, they have a, a, a big impact on you and on uh, the interview atmosphere itself. So please go 20 minutes early. What I would recommend doing is you can go to the toilet to be just more comfortable. Comb your hair. So try to have a comb. Make yourself nice. Adjust your tie. Adjust your clothes. Wear the suit in a nice way. Uh, just put yourself in a nice mood as if that you are super tidy, super neat. So just gives you like that, that wow effect. Dress properly. And what I would say is, do we have a certain dress code? Well, let me share with you the rule for dress code. And just to make it easy, because I know many people have different uh, opinions about it. Some people would say always dress formal. No, you don't need always to dress formal. And that's a trick, actually. So uh, what you should do is, as a rule is, you always dress in the interview like people in that company dress. Very simple, very nice and easy. So you ask yourself, what do people wear at a bank? A suit. It's a formal suit. Any suit? Do they wear white suit? Do they wear green suit? No. They wear black or dark blue. Any color for the shirt? What do they wear? White or light blue? Any color for the tie? No. It's a black or dark blue. So you dress like what people in the company wear. Let me give you a different example. If I'm going to work at a school or at a university, we teachers, we don't wear suits in class. I guess you have never seen a teacher uh, maybe wearing a suit. Maybe we wear blazers, but we wear smart, smart casual. Or not casual, it's smart formal. So it's not very formal. It's not dark suit and a tie. I never go to interviews with a tie because teachers don't wear ties in class. We don't wear ties because we move around the class 
We move around the students. We are active in class, so we don't wear ties. So if I wear a tie, and if I wear formal clothes, formal suit, totally for to an interview, how would I look to the HR person? It means that I, I don't have experience. I don't know what's, what's going around. I don't know what's going on in interviews. So it means I'm a newbie. I'm a newbie, which means mustagad. It means is that you is that you are a beginner. You don't really have experience, and you don't want to give that impression to any person. The third example: if you are a lady and you would like to work at a nursery, teaching the KG people or KG children or maybe younger kids, how would you wear? Are you going to wear high heels? and uh, maybe a uh, formal dress, certainly no. You are going to wear um, uh, maybe something casual, maybe jeans, maybe the sports shoes, just to give the impression that you can play with kids and interact with them in a nice way. You look like them, you look like nursery teachers. So it's okay to go there with a t-shirt, jeans, something colorful. So when they take a look at you, they feel that you, you fit into the atmosphere. You are not odd. And uh, Ahmed, is everything going okay? Do we have any questions in the chat box or something? Uh, no, we don't have. Okay, next one is be chic, and, but not unnatural. And let me again tell you the trick here. Be chic, which means it, it's very nice to be chic because it's, uh, it, 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 it's elegant, it's fashionable. So it's something good. You don't really need to go and you are wearing uh, untidy, untidy clothes. So you need to be tidy. It gives you a nice impression. But don't be unnatural, which means do not overdo it. So you're going to go formal, you're at a bank or you are applying for a project manager or whatever, and you need to be super formal. Don't wear a bow tie. Why? Because it would feel so funny. And it's extremely formal. It's not a wedding party. So what I would like to say don't be unnatural. If you are going to wear a nice tie, malbes tie, betel ma masan, swari, or don't put here. Be chic, be smart, be elegant, but be natural at the very same time. Don't be odd. Don't be strange. Don't overdo it. And a, a trick that I always do, and I find that it gives a very nice impression to you and to HR people, and that's something that you can do during the 20 minutes earlier, have a bottle of perfume with you and wear some perfume. So it gives you a very nice fragrance. And when you step into the interview room, you smell nice affects people's psychology like try to imagine if you if you are a normal person and you are in a taxi or on a bus and you smell a body odor which is not nice a bad one what how would you react without thinking you will feel disgusted you will try to avoid that person you would like to keep away from him what if you smell him, he smells nice, you like the perfume, you would naturally feel attracted to that person. You would like to start a conversation with him. You feel that he's clean, he's professional, he's having an impression. So always try to wear some perfume just before you go to the interview. Comb your hair, adjust your tie, uh, tidy up your clothes, uh, tuck your shirt, uh, try to have some clinics or 
issues in your face or rub your sweat. So don't go sweaty at all because it means that you are in a hurry and you are stressed. So uh, make yourself super prepared. And of course, comfort yourself. So try to calm down. On the spot basics. So things that we should do inside the interview room. Rule number one, always, always, always smile. Have a smile on your face because you don't need to go to the interview room and you just go there this way because it is a very bad impression about you again. It means that you are stressed, not only stressed, it means that you are scared. You are afraid. You don't like to go inside the room. They look like ghosts and you would like to step out. So rule number one, always smile. If you are smiling, it means you are confident. And it will show naturally how your facial expressions are, how your face reacts. Do you keep looking like you don't know So always smile. Greet people well. So what I would say, again, and I find that trick, uh, or I find that mistake is made by many people, because they are stressed, when they go into uh, the interview room, maybe they don't knock the door. So please knock the door. Please be polite. Always be polite. Knock the door. Have a quick look just before you enter the room, maybe from the glass in the door, from the door. Try to see where are people sitting. So you can just in one second know that we have three people right there around the desk or around the table. There is an empty chair, which means probably I will sit here. So when you go inside the room, you don't keep looking this way. You don't, you don't give an impression that you are confused. You know where they are. You know maybe probably where you are going to sit. How many person are they? And so on. Stressed. When they knock the door and go inside, they keep silent. They don't say anything. They are just waiting to sit down. But in order to show that you are not stressed, greet people. So knock the door, go inside, say, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Very happy to see you. So say something. Start the conversation. It means for the HR people, that you would like to talk. You are initiative. So always a smile, be cheerful, greet people. So tell them uh, good morning, say something. Maintain eye contact. So you don't need to greet people, say good morning, and you are looking to the ceiling or you are looking to the door. So maintain eye contact. You are greeting them, look to them. And of course, you should shut the door before you don't leave it open. So some etiquette here, business, general business etiquette. I sometimes do, especially with gentlemen, that I go and shake hands. So I tell them good morning, I shake hands, I tell them I'm really happy to see you, or it's a very nice meeting you. And maybe for men here, it means, again, that you are super confident, you are not scared. You are shaking hands. It shows in your body language. It shows in your handshake, like how your hands feel. So those are really important small tricks. Right at all times. You don't need to uh, shut the door loudly or go inside the room without knocking or not looking to the person you are talking to or keeping looking at your watch. So those are general polite uh, tips that you need to take care of because they, they tell a lot about your personality. They tell a lot about your attitude, not just your performance at work. Not your studio. You show them that you are a good, uh, uh, sincere, decent person. Being rude is not 
cool. And maybe you would say that the point here is repeated. Being polite, it means not to be rude. But what I mean here is something quite different. Uh, some people nowadays try to be, uh, I would say, tough or impolite in their responses to the HR questions. Like, uh, I'm sure you have heard that uh, maybe someone will try to show that he's cool. So when the HR asked him, uh, how, how, how do you, uh, wh what do you think, how you're, what you're going to do in five years? How do you see yourself in five years? That person told him, in your place. Of course, that's not cool. You, you are not cool this way of telling the HR interviewer that in five years, I will be in your place, or I will take your job, or I will be asking better questions than your questions. No. That's, that's rude. And being rude, if you do something like that, first of all, on the ethical level, it means you are rude means you don't have any speaking experience. It means that you want to embarrass him on purpose. And it means that your attitude is not friendly. You feel very competitive than normal. So uh, may, I would say 99% you will be rejected if you do something like that. 99% will be rejected. So please, being rude is not cool. Check your body language and your intonation. So check your body language, how you are entering the room. Try to stand well, stand straight, straighten your back, um, look carefully, uh, open your eyes, like try to feel, give them the feeling that you are attentive, that you pay attention, that you are alert. You don't need to be monotone as if you are reading. You don't want to be uh, having a very low voice. So don't, don't whisper. Don't say, yes, my name is Ahmed and I would like to go there and I would like to work in your company. So don't be that softy because it means, again, that you are not confident. And even on your body language, so when you step into the room, try to have a good posture. My name is No. Try to fix your posture. Don't respond minimally, which means do not give answers which are too short. So uh, and now we are going to deal with the questions and how we can answer those questions. But in general, if they are asking you a question, don't give a very short answer. You are for the interview to explain, to give details, to clarify, to give examples. So don't give the answer, which is already me. So if they ask you about where you work, they already know where you work. It's written on the CV, and they know where you come from. So don't tell them the same thing. They need a different answer. They need you to clarify. They need you to give more details. And always be diplomatic. And being diplomatic is uh, uh, having a kind of negotiation skills. And you, you can manage the conversation. So you, you, you sound natural. Uh, you are not thinking for a long time. You are considering things. You are giving your point of view. You are giving an opinion. Don't be afraid to tell your opinion, your honest opinion about something and explaining your opinion. So that's a big diplomatic, managing the conversation. Be flexible, don't be rigid. Okay, and let's go to the most important part. But maybe before the most important thing, just to refresh. So let me share my screen. And here is the game. So please go to kahoot.it and type in the game in 319906. Okay, Shabab, I'll link to the link in the chat box and the groups on WhatsApp. 
وهبعت لكم اللينك الكود هناك تمام معاكم دقيقتين Okay, doctor, we can start now. Okay. So let's start. So an interview only tests your skills. Let's see. Great. So for sure, it doesn't only test your skills. It tests your skills and your attitude and your behavior, your politeness, and your reactions to different situations. Okay. And let's go for the next one. I want to for an interview. I should arrive in time. Let's see. False. You should you shouldn't arrive on time. You should arrive before the time. At least 20 minutes. If you have an interview at nine o'clock, you should arrive at 8.30, 8.40. You always arrive before the time. It's okay to smile during the interview. You rule number one in any interview, please smile. I should I should give short answers to the HR questions.
okay, for sure you should, for sure it's false because you should give more clarification, more examples, more details, don't give short answers. It's polite not to look directly to the interviewer's eye if she's a lady. Once, I tried to make this one tricky, to be honest. Uh, of course, it's not about politeness. If the interviewer is a gentleman or a lady, you should look directly. You should maintain my contact. So being a lady here or a woman prevents you from looking to the interviewer. And I would even say a very small trick. Sometimes it happens. So just in case you, you are going to meet a female HR interviewer and she felt that you are maybe a gentleman and you're a little bit shy, maybe she is going to use that point to test how you are going to react. So maybe she is going to look directly to you in the eye and see, are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to maintain eye contact, embarrassed or shy, and you're going to look elsewhere? So how we are going to react to that? Okay, and let's go for the next one. I should I should imagine the situation before I sit for an interview. So for sure you should imagine how you are going to be asked, what is the situation, what scenarios might happen to you before you sit for the interview, it makes you much more prepared. Let's see the results. Great job. Okay. Sure, please go on. Uh, how many minutes maximum can I take to answer each question during an interview? Uh, well, uh, my opinion is not about uh, time maximum. We cannot calculate this way because maybe you are asking that. A simple question like introduce yourself and I will tell you how you can answer that and what you should say. So it's something brief. It's like the summary that's written in the CV. So something like half a minute. But if they ask you about your experience and tell us more about it and tell us more about the projects you have done, no, that can't be in half a minute. That means like two, three minutes. Maybe they put you in situations and they, they, they try to give you conditions, give you scenarios, ask, asking you questions with follow-up questions, like what you're going to do, how. So you have lots of follow-up questions, a series of questions, and you need to explain on each one. We can't really... Uh, calculate it this way, like how long you should take uh, per question. What you should do is you should give the necessary information, be clear, be specific, don't make it shorter, and don't uh, narrate your life story. So just to keep it uh, suitable to what you are being asked. Uh, okay, thank you. And the second question is, um... Do you recommend to, to make a quick revision in the morning or I just have to revision before the day of interview? Um, 
maybe okay i would say it's, it's not that extremely serious it's not like revising for an exam just trying to take it easier than that but i would say uh, if you have some information about numbers like how many branches like uh, how many customers things that are a little bit tricky maybe you don't you try to go inside with a piece of paper it's it's not it's not that graduation test but i would say just do whatever you like to keep yourself uh, to keep the information at the top of your head so you are always ready to respond okay doctor thank you we can continue now okay and let's move on so the biggest part of our uh, uh, presentation today is going to be questions and answers. Like, uh, what questions I'm going to be asked and how I should answer them. So that's like the heart of the presentation. And uh, let me go. Yeah. Introduce yourself. I try to get you like. Uh, uh, the frequently asked questions, the most common questions you will find in interviews. Of course, each field has different questions and has some technical questions, but I'm not talking about technical questions because it may be in the field of teaching we are asked some specific questions about teaching and learning and uh, quizzes. For engineers, they have some special technical questions. For doctors, they have some special questions, but I'm, I'm talking about the most common general questions and how you should answer them. First of all, introduce yourself. You don't need here to say everything about you because it's only introduced yourself, which means just to give me a brief, give me a summary. Like the summary that we mentioned in the CV and we talked about yesterday which was like three lines, the objective. So you can say your name, or you say, uh, what's your recent job or what's your current job? And what would you like to achieve in the future? That's all. Don't keep talking about your education and your work experience and your skills. It's always the first question. They will ask you some questions later. So if you introduce yourself, be to the point, be brief, say your name, say what's your current job, what you're looking for. That's all. And don't say information required, which means introduce yourself. Don't say, my name is Ali. Uh, I was born in uh, 30th of August, uh, 1970. I have two brothers and three sisters. I have two kids. Shayma and uh, Ala, nine years old and six years old. No, that's all irrelevant. That's all of point. So don't give unnecessary information. Please tell me more about your work. I can answer that. So that's actually the, the question about work. So you shouldn't say lots of things about your work and introduce yourself, as we have mentioned. Tell me more about your work, which is, okay, now please give me more focus on your work. So it's we can now talk about your work experience. So you can say uh, uh, where you have been working, several places that you worked at, what you have been doing, the projects you have been working on, uh, the teams you were working with, and so on. So you will be giving more details about your uh, previous work and two tricky parts here two tricky parts part number one for fresh graduates what i would do when they ask me tell me more about your work i didn't have a previous job and uh, in the cv i don't have a work experience what i should do what you mentioned just yesterday you have training you have skills, you have uh, hobbies, talk about this. 
So if they if they tell you if, if they tell you tell me more about you, uh, tell me more, not introduce. Tell me more about yourself. Tell me more about your recent work or what you do. You can tell them about volunteer work you did, the student activities you have joined. What was your role in the in those student? Were you a coordinator? Were you a team leader? Did you send emails, corresponding, managing, advertising, HR, whatever? So what was your role? Maximize that point. Talk about it. And express all of the skills under that part. Because you are a fresh graduate. That's all what you got. So we need to maximize. We need to stretch this part. But not to stretch it without giving uh, proper information. You need to add new information. You need to contribute to the conversation. So don't keep saying, I had experience with the student model, blah, blah, blah. That's all. No. Say, I, I joined that student activity. My role was um, something I used to do, one, two, three, four. That helped me to one, two, three, four. I learned it from the experience, one, two, three, four, and so on. So move from one to develop yourself. And uh, the second point, the second tricky point is when they tell you, please tell me more about your work. Remember again, in the CV, we wrote the title and then we wrote some responsibilities, like let's say project manager, uh, Halle Burton. And you wrote some responsibilities, able to manage a project X, a coordinated uh, uh, a team that consists of 50 people, sent uh, emails and scheduled the tasks on time. So you are writing the points under the title in the CV, your responsibilities, your main responsibilities. Here, when they tell you, tell me more about your work, you don't tell him what's written on the CV. You explain the objectives, you explain the responsibilities. For example, if you had one point, which is able to uh, coordinate, or let's say coordinator of a team of 50 people. That's one sentence in the CV. Now I'm going to, 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 to say it here at that point. I was able to be the coordinator of a big team that consists of 50 people. Those 50 people coming from different backgrounds. They have, we have students, we have seniors, we have maybe graduates. Uh, they come from different uh, societies, different communities. And that made me able to uh, communicate with them easily, get to know their mindsets, trying to compromise, to have to agree on main decisions, uh, uh, resolve uh, problems if we have any problems, negotiate the solutions that we can arrive to. So we change the point from one sentence to explanation, which you want. Again, 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 skills, focus on skills. I can do, I was able to, I did, not I had, not I have a certificate, not I have a diploma, not I have a document, I can do. Okay, and before the next question, if they ask you about your education, so uh, again, and something related to education and related to work, don't keep saying the certificates that you got. Let me give you an example. Don't say, I went to a language center and I got a certificate in uh, advanced English. I went to a computer center and I got a special diploma in computer programming. Don't say that. Don't say I, I have. Don't focus on the documents. Transfer those points into skills. Instead of saying, I had a certificate from Language Center X, uh, 
uh, uh, for advanced English, they can write emails in English and correspond very well at a very advanced level with correct, suitable language. Same thing, hey, hey, but you changed it from uh, something that you have to something that you can do. That's key. Instead of saying, I have ICDL certificate, it changed into a skill. I can use the computer effectively, and I can use a lot of computer like Microsoft Office Suite and blah, blah, blah. So you change it from I have ICDL to I can use computer. Change from certificates to skills. That's really something very, very important because it's a very common mistake. Don't keep saying, I have a diploma, I have a certificate, I have training. Instead of saying, I have training, say, I can do one, two, three, four. Why should we hire you? Of course, you don't say because you are hiring. That's a comic. Yeah, so don't say because I'm hiring, because again, it will be like a joke, maybe a rude joke, maybe they don't get the joke and they don't laugh, so uh, you, you embarrass yourself. Uh, so why should we hire you? Don't mention what you mentioned in the previous questions. Uh, because I can blah, blah, blah. And I had, or because I work, so why should we hire you? You try, we are going to link between that part and the preparation part before the interview. What's your research on? So let's say you are going to work at an entertainment and you are going to work for the credit card department. So why should we hire you? But all my faculty of commerce, and uh, I can deal with numbers. We have millions of people who graduated from the faculty of commerce. We have tens of people who can work with numbers. We have lots of people who studied the accounting course and the finance course. We have millions. Why should we hire you? Because even especially in Egypt, we are 100 million. That will not make you special that you graduated from a certain faculty or you had some special courses of A. What you are going to add to the company, the added value, that, that is the real trick. Added value. Why should we hire you? Because uh, after I studied uh, commerce and the finance at the Faculty of Commerce, blah, 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 and I was able to work at uh, that previous company, and I had maybe training. I have a plan to uh, promote your marketing uh, in the company. I have a plan to maximize the role of your credit card department to make. What? La say how you are going to implement that plan. I'm going to work, I'm going to maximize your credit card department by having lots of offers to maximize the number of customers and give them more privileges and the benefits to use the credit cards. And that will help the bank to increase the number of customers that they serve this year more than the previous year. Can you feel the difference? So now, as an HR person, I will feel what, what I'm going to feel. This person is going to help me, help me as a bank, achieve our goal. The bank's goal is an have a course of halos, let is someone who's planning on improving our business, maximizing our company, making our reputation better, 
making our position better, developing to our progress, developing our business. So it's a totally different level in the response. في الريسبونس العادي اللي ما بيجيبش وفي الريسبونس اللي هو that really hits the point. كم لو انت عارف الفيجن اند ميشن ذات ويل بي سوبر عارف الفيجن اند ميشن منين؟ فروم ذا ويب سايت سو اف يو جو اند ريد ذا فيجن اند ميشن اند يو ميتش يو بلان اند يو ميتش يو ريسبونس تو ذا فيجن اند ميشن بينجو يو باست يو اولموست باست ذا انترفيو اند يو ار جوينج تو ريسبوند ان ا سوبر واي تو ذا كويستشن So it just needs the preparation. I'm gonna be all. For an interview, Shannon, I don't know if it's a interview empty. No, it needs much more research than that. Imagination, which imagination? Oh, خلاص. I'm not imagining that I'm sitting in in the chair. وبكلم واحد لبس بدلة and he is asking me question. No, that's not the imagination I uh, wanted to tell you about. Imagination, يعني. Scenario, question, how I'm going to answer, what kind of answer, how, how I'm going to make the company, how is it going to be different from other responses, how I'm going to be special from different applicants. So it needs some time to imagine yourself in the situation. That next question, how do you see yourself in five years? We agreed. We should all in your place. How in? Uh, I will be your manager. How I will be your boss. Don't be rude. Not cool. So how do you see yourself in five years? How can I respond to that? What is the recommended way? The trick. Don't just to say the position. Say how. Any. يعني don't say yeah I see myself in five years to be the project manager full stop واطلع يعني خلاص الإجابة خلصت no أي حد will say that يعني شيء أو don't be dreamy يعني make it realistic وقلنا كده في ال CV yesterday be realistic يعني If you are going, if they are going to ask you, how do you see yourself in five years? Don't say I will be the CEO of the company. Either you are, you are not a smart person. Yeah, you are alien. You are, you are weirdo. So don't say something that's not manageable, that's not calculated. Uh, many people say in the field of teaching, in my field, some people say I would like to be the minister of education. طبعا how you are going to be the minister of education not in five years not in 10 years not in 20 years okay so be realistic if you say something like that you will be very much unexperienced and you don't want it to show that impression But what I should say first of all pick something reasonable five years to say you can be in those five years Maybe moving from uh, a team member to a team leader to a senior team leader. For Haga, it makes sense. Yeah, it's logic. To have a rationale behind it. And don't just say the position, say how you are going to reach it. I think I'm going to be a project manager. And I am going to achieve that by, first of all, I can spend in order to know the basics and the fundamentals of the department that I work in. Then I will I can work on being a senior member by coordinating from starting skills exam or being promoted a whole plan by coordinating between some team members to let them achieve roof. نودي كل حاجة في زكة البزنس. Achieve the goals of the department in a more professional way. Then I will take a diploma related to management 
and then I'm going to be able or I'm going to be qualified for being a project manager and being able to manage that department to serve its purpose efficiently. That is the answer. So now, how do I look like? Then, what is the difference between LL, I would like to be a project manager, LL, كل الشرح ده? The first person, the second person has a plan, has an agenda, three steps are plan, calculated, reasonable, accurate, RVMA. So that's the trick. Next one. What are your strengths and the weaknesses? And very famous question. It, it's divided into two parts, the strengths and the weaknesses. What are your strengths? I'm very cool. And again, I get that. Of course, you will not say something like that. Don't say I'm super smart. I'm so cool. I'm very fashionable. Uh, no, because that's not the strength that they are looking for. This way you will, you will look like you are showy, or you are arrogant, or you are full of yourself. What's the strength of me? What's the strength of the What's the strength of What are your strong skills? What skills you can do in almost a perfect way? And your strongest um, so always focus on skills. For example, you mentioned that any strength and so on. Uh, one trick here. Some people by acts would like to look yani humble. I'm not really strong. I don't have any point of strength. I should get reasonable. No, don't do that. Why? Because if you say that I don't have any point of strength, it means you really don't have a point of strength, which is negative, or you have never thought about your abilities. Yeah, and you never reflected on yourself. You never considered your uh, points of strength and the points of weakness. It, it's very nice to reflect on yourself, take a, a little interview, think, what points of strength do you have and what are your weaknesses? How much weaknesses? Points or skills to work on? Respond in equality, for example. Yes, he's gone. Uh, okay, so let me let me try to just a minute. Let me manage. Okay, so uh, let, let me turn on again. I'll just try to make it clear, but just okay. So, just in case it's not clear, please tell me so I can uh, maybe switch off the video to enhance the microphone. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Okay. So, again, points of strength. Take an example of something you can really do. You can really do again. It's realistic and it's true. Say, I can manage my time very well. Basta kida? Give an example. Yes, give an example. So, cliche, I'm a hard worker. I'm a hard worker. I'm a team player. I can work under stress. Uh, I can work in harder conditions. That's all hard work. That's all I can work under stress. How to demonstrate that skill? How you will prove it to them by giving them a situation? I am a team player. For example, when I go to a course and we sit in groups, I try to manage between the team members. I try to coordinate between them. I try to listen to different opinions and be flexible. 
I try to uh, uh, task and uh, our parts together in order to present a project or give our presentation in a nice and integral way. That's okay. That you proved that you can work in a team. I am a hard worker. Give example. What do you mean by hard work? Hard worker, yeah. Well, you stay on Fridays and Saturdays. But what do you mean exactly by hard work? What do you mean exactly by working under stress? Working under stress, yeah. It's, it's one of the most stretchy words. Working under stress means uh, uh, you can work uh, on lots of tasks, multitasker, or you can work under stress that must uh, uh, in an atmosphere, makassar. And, and you don't have, you don't have computer on the stress. Had it. Click clear, diamond the answers because they might ask you follow up questions. Uh, uh, always be true, don't lie. I can work under stress. I will like, can you work on the Fridays and Saturdays? Masalan, yeah, at weekends. And to buy a deed, and I used to all look at game. But all, oh, yes, I have no problem work on Saturdays. But in the job, they put you on Fridays and Saturdays. And they can ask another question. Ah, uh, does it mean that you don't give enough time to family? Don't you care about your children? So they are going to ask you some other questions as follow-up. So always be careful of that. Is the voice is still clear? Maybe yes, someone can okay. Oh, sure. Okay, the first... Please go on. Okay. Uh, the first question is, what if I had a discussion like a senior project discussion? What should I do when entering the room? W would you please repeat again? Um, if I have a discussion like a senior project discussion, what should I do when entering okay. the room? When entering the yeah. room? Well, when writing the no, role, entering the room. Okay, maybe you can um, for sure prepare what you are going to say about that project. Yeah, research what you did in that uh, project. Because yeah, I know if him to form the question is that they are going to ask you about the project that you did. Is that correct? Did I get your point correctly? Uh, I think he mean like well, you meant something he different. Is entering the room, what should he say? Or how he he start the conversation like? I should say in. Ah, okay. When he enters the room, how what to say? Always a smile, uh, greet them, and most probably they will start the discussion. They will invite you. They, they will tell you, please have a seat. Go out, have a seat. Hey, introduce yourself. What, what, before introducing, yeah, before they ask you to introduce yourself, hey, you have two points. How was your day? Was it easy to find the office? interview. They will ask you like, or they will tell you like two points to make yourself comfortable before the real interview. So 99.9%, .9 they will start the discussion. So don't worry, if you just say good morning, they tell you have a seat, they ask you about how you found uh, the office, was it easy, uh, how was the weather, a general question, and they will start uh, the questions. Uh, the second question is, if I had a discussion, uh, no, sorry, uh, what if someone is going to work in teaching. How could be the answer to the question of how do you see yourself after five years? Uh, what I can say is that maybe you can, because 
teachers are teachers. Maybe you just have different responsibilities. But there is no one is a classic promoter. You know, what is it? Versus you have a member and then a senior member and then project manager and then assistant director and then director. We don't have that in the field of teaching. Either teacher, senior teacher, teacher trainer, and that's all. So maybe when it comes to teaching, you can say, I can see myself as a senior teacher. Why? Uh, first of all, I'm going to get competent with the classes I'm going to give. I'm going to know more about what kind of, what kind of audience I'm teaching about my students. Uh, I'm going to assess their backgrounds, put them into consideration, develop my teaching methodology based on uh, uh, their uh, types of learning. And by doing all of that, I'm going to develop the curriculum, develop the material that can be taught in that center, and that will qualify me to be a senior teacher. Okay, Doctor, the last question is, uh, how can I express my weakness without giving a bad impression? Okay, sure, we'll come to that right now. So yes, now let's go to the weakness. We, we, we talked about uh, strength and uh, how you can give an example of a strength. So you're going to pick a strong skill and give an example on it. Probably weakness, any. Be that kind of person in the whole eyes to give يعني, a strange answer. We all, I'm not to die for don't give that kind of answers. I'm very honest. Oh, uh, for example, my point of weakness, I trust people easily. Uh, HR people know يعني, those tricks. Uh, how to answer a correct and as an honest answer? Number one, be honest. We don't lie but we beautify. How to give an example of a weakness? Pick a real weakness. Pick a real weakness. I told you, say, and pick a real weakness. Oh, pick a real weakness. Say, for example, I have a problem with time management. Oh, okay. Best. Complete. I have a problem with time management, but I have been working on it for the past year. For example, us as a teacher, I try to have a stopwatch. So we start the session on time, we start the task on time, and do we finish on time? And that has helped me a lot in monitoring my uh, management of time and improving it. Bingo. Why bingo? Because it means you can reflect on your skills. You can reflect on your points of weaknesses. You can create a plan. That's it. those problems. To uh, overcome those challenges. To solve your uh, problems. And to make your points of weakness, points of strength. All the stuff. And be so honest. Oh, sorry. Uh, don't give that kind of answers of a weak. And at the same time, don't give fatal mistakes. And if fatal mistakes, and if fatal weakness, and if that's my passion, kill. And you don't say I get angry quickly. And I'm going to uh, fight with customers. Or uh, if we are going to have a, a, a hot discussion, you are going to leave the meeting and they break the table. In fact, so you can't say that I have uh, I get angry quickly. How, uh, when it comes to me, yani teachers, we, you can say I'm impatient. And, uh, you're not going to spend some time teaching and reteaching the students. It can't be crucial. You cannot uh, yani, say it. If you have a it's okay. If someone has a problem, try to challenge the time management. How, Multitasking or uh, scheduling and uh, keeping things in the right time. 
يعني حاجات من so try to find something that's okay for anyone can have and next one Uh, sorry, إحنا عندنا سؤالين في سؤال واحد حك يعني ممكن نقول. Okay. Uh, okay. If I, if I put under the situation of being asked about a question that I don't have an answer, how can I reply? Uh, okay, that's a common one. That's that's a very very common because يعني uh, while we are trying to understand the HR people هم at the very same time trying to develop their questions يعني هو الموضوع جاي من ناحيتين we are trying to know them more and to overcome their hard questions وهم at the same time دلوقتي زينا they are trying to develop harder questions أو يعني more testing questions وبيعرفوا الحاجات اللي احنا بنقولها and they are trying to اللي اقولها برضو انسي دوت يعني حاجه ثانيه تو تيستد ف اتس نيفر اندنج يعني مهما يو ويل فايند تكنيكس اند كويستشنز باي اتش ار بيبل تو اكت بس اتس اول اباوت انسيوت اول اباوت هاو يو جوين تو ريأكت تو ذا كويستشن ليتس سي ذا اسك دو ا كويستشن طبعا المفروض ان ذا كويستشن ذات يو ويل نوت بي ايبل تو اسك A very far-fetched question. يعني إيه far-fetched؟ يعني question that بعد the imagination و بعد the research و بعد the preparation for the interview. No technical things. Why have experience? Why try to imagine the hardest questions ever? Why try to plan my answers to the job? بعد كل ده. طلع بقى كويستشن ما كنتش معاكوا المفروض ان هو ده كويستشن بس اللي اقع فيه مش الكويستشن العاديين كويستشن العادي كويستشن العادي اتس ابيك بروبلم ات مينز ذات يو ار نوت ريدي انف جت كلير اف اتس ا توتال نيو كويستشن لا ده في يعني رينج بقى ذي ار جوينج تو ايفالويت يو يعني مش من اول مره او اف يو ار نوت شور ده از ا ويك كانديدت لا فيها فيها كلام يعني فالمفروض ان هو تو بي فيري ديفيكالت كويستشن او ا فيري سترينج كويستشن. لو هاو وي ار جوينج تو ريأكت نيفر ايفر سي اي دونت نو. نيفر ايفر سي اي دونت نو. طب ايه ده؟ يو سيد ذات وي شودنت لاي بوت بيوتيفاي. هاو كان وي انسر؟ اه تراي تو انسر از ماتش از يو كان. From your experience. It's fine. I can't let it end. But try to uh, find something that you can add. معناه إن أنت you can react quickly. You can brainstorm quickly. You can analyze, and you can think on the spot and answer. يعني for example, for example, ask uh, someone might ask you about. Uh, يعني خلينا خلينا let's brainstorm with any. question ملوش علاقة بالانترفيو let's say مثلا ايه uh, what do you think what is the relation between cars and banks اي حاجة يعني crazy question what is the relation between cars and banks قول حاجة قول يعني answer you must answer don't be silent or don't say I don't know say مثلا ايه انا بفكر دلوقتي يعني ولا Uh, sharing things with you. So I might say, yes, there are some links, maybe some links between cars and banks because people who use bank and uh, try to get a loan, they try to get loans to buy some cars. And maybe banks can help them in buying their dream cars. So that might be a kind of investment for the bank. A car on the spot that lot of answer. And uh, if people are going to get loans, crude, will banks can help them? That might uh, increase the investment in the field of automotive business. But that's what they'd like to be able to think on the spot and take like two, three minutes. So how will the point? Well, you are going to be on. 
you're going to go blank. Tell me if there are any other questions. Yes, last one. On. Okay. Um, how can I maintain my over my overall behavior while answering the interviewer's questions? Uh, please repeat the very last part. Okay. Um, how can I maintain my overall behavior while answering the interviewer's questions? Okay. So first of all, within our team, interviewers are going to put you under pressure for sure. Why under pressure? Because they would like to test any, not only your skills, but your reaction and your behavior and your manners. And, and you're going to put you under pressure in many ways. And there are lots of techniques. But I'm going to to not be angry. If we are going to be angry, 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 سكيري موفي اللي هو بيخوف لما هروح وعارف المشهد هيجي امتى لما هيجي المشهد مش هتخاف مش هخاف لان انا عارف خلاص غير لما اروح واتخض بجد تراي تو بريبير يور سيلف بيفور ذا انترفيو ذات ار جوينج تو بوت اون ذا تراك يو ار توكينج اند ذي ار نوت لوكينج ميبي يو ار توكينج اند ذي ار رايتنج سمثينج ان ا بيبر ميبي Uh, whenever you say something, they take down some notes. Then that has in the they are writing the mistakes about you. Maybe uh, uh, you are speaking or the AM get from the desk or trying to get a cup of tea. But a normal person or a new person or a beginner would be very affected to me personally. He's not paying me attention. That's not respectful. Uh, that's not a reputable place. That's out of etiquette. for a reason. It's It's purposeful. You would like to get. Will you be angry quickly? Well, you might be angry. angry off. But you are going to manage it. And you are not going to show. You are going to act professionally. So that is the point. Always try to be calm, manage your intonation, yeah, your voice tone. Don't show that you are angry. Don't speak too quickly. Don't speak too slowly. Don't take too long time to think. Be chatty. Be friendly. Khalik fresh. Khalik fresh. And at the very same time, be formal. Which means I will be and be fresh. I will be in shorts. No. How you sit down on the chair? So sit properly. Make your uh, back straight. Don't sit like that, as if you are uh, sleeping. Uh, so sit properly. Put your hands beside you. So don't 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 do like that. Don't play in your hair. Don't play in your ear. Don't sit like that. Don't put your hands together because you will be confused, distressed, and you will start playing with your fingers. So keep them on your legs. Keep them on your legs. And don't oversit. So don't do this way. So just to be normal. Just to be natural. Do we have any other questions? No, that's all for the answer questions. Okay, and uh, let's move. And okay, why did you quit your job? What I should say, how long is because I left them, or because I was fired, or because I had a fight with my manager? Of course, again, it's one of the tricky questions. So, a rule here never ever say any negative comment on your previous job. Never ever, under any circumstances. Why? Because it sounds like there's a kind of a background noise. Okay, so uh, why again? Never say anything negative about your previous job. It sounds like saying negative comments to your fiance, about your partner, about your ex-girlfriend. Same way, same thing. 
So it means that if you are saying bad comments about your previous job, you will say bad comments about them for, for the future opportunity. And because you ended a relationship, it's over. It's over. So don't say anything negative about it. But what can I say? Why did you quit your job? Because of direct or indirect, uh, indirect reasons. Indirect reasons can be like, it's far away from my home. Simple. Yani, for example, I used to work at a university in October. And after I got married, I moved to Rehab. So simply speaking, I can't go from Rehab to October. That's, that's like three hours or more than three hours going and three hours coming back. So why did I quit my job? My answer was true because it's quite far from my job. I don't know both of these skills. It's far from my, from my home. And I, I can't spend all of that long time going back and forth because it affects my performance. Uh, I need to go to class and be fresh. I need to be energetic, be active. And I don't need the distance and commuting to have a negative effect on my performance. But as simple as that. Or you can say, someone is applying at a bank in Tagamo and he lives in Tagamo and the new bank Gambo in Tagamo. So um, you can yani, tackle it from different points. You can say, because I need to have, or I need to implement a plan in your bank. They own by going to maximize the credit card department. So you tell them about the plan. Maybe they ask you a follow up question. Maybe they ask you a question like, why you were not able to do, why you didn't do that plan in your previous job? Simply, you can tell them, I quit because I wasn't able to apply or help or bring or play a role uh, in the discussions and the negotiations going down to create a decision or make decisions. So I felt that I'm not uh, uh, one of the decision makers, not decision makers, actually, decision makers don't be important. But I felt that I don't have a significant role in improving the bank. I didn't have a significant role in improving the bank. But that means that I I didn't feel that I'm adding any value. I didn't feel that I'm I'm, I'm contributing. And that's what I'm looking for at your bank to develop my skills, to contribute to your business, to develop you as a company, and to develop myself. So it's a win-win game. So that's how how you can tackle that question. Most important question, everyone is waiting for that part. What are your expectations about the salary? We have two scenarios. If you are a fresh graduate, uh, we, 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 we have, let's start with something else. Companies come in different uh, levels. Uh, uh, very, very respectable companies, Yani super respectable companies, they, they write the salary in the advertisement. Aslan. When I go to go and we're going to see the advertisement. Project manager, one year contract renewable, uh, 10,000. For example, you already know. If I'm accepted, I will take 10,000 uh, as a salary monthly. That's one level of companies. The, the lower level, they write the salary, that's negotiable. And it tells you a, it tells you uh, upon experience. 
جايبين يعني عندهم سكيدجول اوف الاكسبيرينس ايكويفالنت لسالري ايه يعني المفروض ده ما فيهوش نيجوشيشن لا اتس اكوردنج تو كرايتيريا يعني اف يو ار 1 يير اكسبيرينس تاخد 2000 3 يير 3000 4 يير 4000 وهكذا But it's it has no negotiation. It has no expectations. How much expectations? How many times? How many times? No. Or fill it. And you are putting a list. The time, like equivalent A. And they are going to tell you that number. You take it or leave it. No full negotiation. And no, all one is on a step or on a band on the list. So, في ناس ما عندهاش list. In this, I is the truth. Maybe an applicant is very strong, but he cannot negotiate. Uh, if he takes five thousand, we can give him two. We are done. When we have offered, save the three thousand for the company. Well, another person can negotiate well. For the turn, they do five million. So they do what? They do negotiate. And usually, the band the L are keeping the range big. And it's a range big, and it tells you, uh, customer service agent, salary starts from three thousand to twelve. طبعا انت عينا كراي على فين at twelve at three. That's just to attract the people. بس في الحقيقة هتلاقي نفس التريني اللي هيقول لك أصلا ده upon experience. طب مين اللي بياخد twelve? اللي عنده 50 سنه اكسبيرينس هتبقى حاجه طبعا ان رياليستيك بس هم حاطينها تو اتراكت ابلكنتس مش مش حقيقي مفيش حد كده اصلا ف يعني وات ار يور اكسبكتيشنز اباوت ذا سالري؟ ليتس توك اباوت ذا بان اللي انا مش عارف السالري فيه كام لان هو لو السالري معروف انا خلاص معروف يو ار جوينج تو ذا انترفيو اند يو نو اوريدي هاو ماتش ويل بي بيد اف ذا سالري از نوت منشند اور اتس ريتن Some tricks you can do to get to know the range of the salary. First of all, ask people in the same field who work in that field and ask them, what about a person who has my experience and who has my qualifications? How much or what is the range of salary he can get? I only like, wallahi, someone who has Your experience and your qualifications and your at the bank that he is go out the company he he is going to get a salary ranging from four to five. For example, but خلاص أبدا عندي range between brackets again. When I go and they ask me what are your expectations about the salary and I know خلاص إن أنا عرفت من الناس and from colleagues. And I tried to ask people on LinkedIn, maybe who who used to work at those places, had been having experience, but the previous experience, they were from four to five. Marochan only two, or by mafsud two, because it means for the HR interviewer, which mawdu an huwa he's busted, and huwa he's going to give you, yani a smaller amount of money. He's going to know that you are inexperienced. لإن لو كان عندك experience كنت عارف. He is going to know that you are inexperienced. طب أنا عرفت من from four to five. And I told them again. It means you are inexperienced and you are very dreamy. فاكر إن أنت you're going to get thousands and hundred thousands, which is not true. So you are playing around the range and you're playing around the range. You know that the range is from four to five. What what you should say? Six. So when you negotiate it, it comes back to let's say uh, five five thousand, which is the maximum range. Or maybe you can say five five hundred. So when you negotiate, it becomes five. So again, you are at the maximum of the range. Or at the maximum, four thousand eight hundred. Let's say, so you are a winner here. Don't say anything below because if you say five, they will negotiate and make it four, which is the minimum of the range. 
So you always try to make it a little bit higher than the maximum of the range. A little bit higher. And uh, maybe something for experienced, and if we have any experienced uh, viewers, always ask about the salary. Uh, yani sometimes something happens. You say the range is from four to five, and you tell them I need uh, 5,500. They tell you, okay, we we'll make it 5,000. I got the maximum of the range. And then the final is gross salary, not net salary. What is the difference? Gross salary and insurance or anything else. And you can take it away. You can take it away for example. Maybe that's something for much more experienced people, and they are going to know those tricks related to the differences. So you always ask about the net salary. Net salary, which means the amount of money that you are going to get paid directly, cash in hand. Do you have any questions, Damon? Can at the end of uh, the interview, we ask you. Do you have any questions? Taba and taba al fatra di. You feel exhausted. You feel tired. You would like to quit. You would like to run away. And you would like to open the door. Kila butatla tigni. And that's a mistake. Because it means that the interview is stressful for you and you need to end the conversation. So do you have any questions? Hello, I'm going to ask you a question. A few questions to say that can give me a positive impression, for sure. Let me show you some. What benefits do your employees enjoy? Ah, I tell you, tell me on the benefits of the work. You will start giving me more information about the job, more information about the responsibilities and the advantages that I might have. Will you provide me with professional training? Ah, maybe they will provide you with professional training, but it will be recorded training week. But the nazar on the job that is to be like a separate training. حطوا في السي في عندك تبقى at least استفدت من الجوب دي ان انت اخدت التريننج. طيب does it give strong يعني positive impression about me for sure ليه؟ because you are asking about training you need to be trained انت مش بتقول انا سوبر واو انت مش بتقول انا انا باتمان no you are seeking training you would like to learn you would like to improve yourself and you would like to improve the place Will you provide me with the necessary tools and devices? For example, I work in classrooms, smart classrooms, with the smart boards and the computers and the project projectors. So I always ask, do you have computers and the projectors? I'm going to class with my laptop. I will not do that. I will give internet. أو أجيب بروجيكتور من أجيب ما فيش بروجيكتور من أنا أنا أمي إيه فين الباور بوينت بشتغل على إيه so you need to ask about those things are you going to provide me with the necessary devices maybe you are an engineer you have some special equipment ask about them they are going to provide you ولا أنت هتجمع على حسابك موضوع تاني so always be careful do you provide transportation very important especially for people who live far away from uh, their offices, and again, uh, it, it it it's it translates into money, into money. So transportation is expensive nowadays. So try to think about it. If you're going to go every day back and forth uh, by bus or by car, yani how 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 much are you going to pay for your fuel? So maybe it's something to consider. Do you fund the professional degrees? And for some people to take a diploma at a special place, can you fund me? Can you give me some financial aid, financial support? Maybe they tell you yes. They buy it for free. Sometimes they will just give you a requirement. Yeah, they will tell you we can pay you the course, but you need to work for us for two years after the course. Is that how you think about it? 
You provide social and the medical insurance, extremely important. Social and medical insurance, are they going to uh, provide you with medical care? And what kind of medical care? Maybe it's not important to you, but it's important for some other people. So be careful about it again. And what does the medical care cover? Okay, and post interview. Now we are done with the interview. Shake hands, say goodbye. It was very nice to see you. Uh, smile. And now is the last part post interview after the interview. After one of your interview, يعني إيه؟ يعني, uh, 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 don't call them or send them an email saying, كده أنا ما قاليش response. Am I uh, accepted or rejected? Never ever ask them for when I'm going to hear from you. Okay? Because if you give them that sentence, it means you are waiting for the job. And if they know that you are waiting for the job, they put you on more pressure and they lower your salary. You see, and you know, what he needs is a job very much. Get them. Alas, okay. And hot under pressure. So don't give them that impression. Be cool. If the, if you are accepted, they will call you. They have uh, your details. So don't worry about them. And the most probably, they will tell you at the end of the at the end of the interview that we are going to get back to you within two days, within a month. Or maybe they can tell you uh, if you are going to be shortlisted, we are going to get back to you. Respond professionally for the offer email. In case you are accepted. Yani, uh, what I mean by offer email, if you are accepted. In case you are accepted, they will send you an email, an official email, that has the package, salary, all details, insurance, uh, working days, whatever. And you accept, yani, in business email, accept the offer. And you need, to, that's why emails are documented. Maybe last week we covered that part. Email is for archiving and documenting. If you are going to reply for the email, it means that you officially agree for the package. So you need to respond quickly and don't leave them for two or three days. They sent you an offer, you should respond quickly and professionally. This email behind. You check your email regularly. That's why you need to check it day, day by day. So don't don't respond to the offer email after three, four days. It means that you don't check your emails and you are not يعني, waiting to hear from them. So be careful again. And again, is everyone ready? Doctor, we have a lot of questions. Do you want to answer now or then sure. at the end of the game? Okay. The first question maybe is... Now, maybe after the game. Okay, okay. okay go on. Okay. Is it unprofessional to have a small agenda in, in the interview to write the questions? In the interview, to write the questions? Which questions? The interviewer's want, questions? Uh, no, the... The one who have interviewed. Oh, if I'm an interviewee and I go for the interview with the questions that that mean my questions, well, yeah, the interview was the question. My, my questions? Yeah. Like, you, it, maybe I wouldn't say it's, yeah, it doesn't look very nice to go with an agenda. I, I don't know. That's my impression. I might be wrong. Yeah, it's all about opinion here. Uh, yeah. But I would say, yani, going inside an interview with an agenda, yani, uh, Ramadan alamin hamuda, get the yani. So, so maybe you can ask those questions. You know what you are going to say. You remember them. That's, yani, taking a notebook and writing down some notes, it feels a little bit nerd. Okay. Okay, the next question is, if I got accepted in more than one place, how to apologize to the other place without leaving that impact on me? 
uh, all right uh, yani uh, uh, maybe what what you do is, uh, again maybe we have many ways one way is to say of course when you try to leave a job uh, we have two things here two different parts leaving a job yani quitting a job we uh, canceling an offer or uh, yani uh, you got an offer but you have to apologize for the offer if you are going to leave a job you need to give two months notice that's a business no you need to leave two months notice if you are going to apologize for an offer maybe you can mention that yeah يعني maybe this is the only way around you can you can say it in different ways you can uh, say uh, I, I reconsidered the salary and uh, I guess we need to renegotiate it maybe but all transportation is not provided and uh, I care very much about transportation and my my tasks my scheduling maybe you can say uh, uh, I need more equipment to be provided to me to do my job. How will you have any element and you apologize? Yani, most of probably they, they will not be able to do it for you. Illa, if you are very lucky, it can be well. Yani, what is for uh, offer X? Offer Y. Offer X can 4,000. Offer Y, 5,000. Offer X, uh, I think we need to negotiate it. We will give you six. Okay? So uh, the way here you are going to go to offer Y and apologize for it. So يعني, maybe you get to be lucky. Uh, okay, the next question is, is it possible to answer the question correctly at the end of the interview if I didn't know the response at the end of the question? Not really. Okay. Lesson. If you don't know, if you if you cannot answer it on the spot, rah, because everyone can answer all questions after some time. Well, he is testing your promptness. You are quickly responsive. How you are smart. How you can think on the spot. Plus, if, if, you, if you can do that, but later, that's not what I wanted to get as an interviewer. Uh, okay, the next question is, can I say I didn't fit in or I felt that I wasn't in the right place and stay some reasons? The principal is the question is... Some reasons? Okay, My, uh, uh, being careful here about follow-up questions. And okay, uh, if you would like to say I, uh, I, I stayed for some reasons, they will ask you, uh, what are the reasons? Uh, are you ready to share the reasons or not? Okay. Uh, okay. If I don't hear the question, well, may I say repeat the question? Yes. Uh, um, it should be like once or twice, not every question. And what I mean is uh, it should sound natural. Maybe you, you couldn't get the question. So it happens one time, uh, especially that it's not online. Like online, the cost of that. Online, maybe there is a connection issue. You can't hear it happens. It occurs at any time. If you are sitting face to face and the both of you are loud enough and he asks you a question and you couldn't get it quickly, maybe you can ask him to be him to repeat every question or more than two or three questions it leaves a very bad impression on your language on your language which means a, your listening skills are not good enough it means that and you keep thinking about it and you try to understand it you take some time 
So your, your language level is not up to standard. Okay, the last question. Uh, if they ask me to rate myself during the interview, do I give them only a number or a number? Rate myself? Always the number is under 10, so he or she will ask me uh, where lost scores went. What should I answer? Uh, I, I would say again, it's a different question and you just a reshaping of the question of what are your points of weakness? Hey, hey, points of strength or point of weakness, but uh, in a different form. Because if you're going to, if I'm going to read myself and they ask me what about the lost uh, business, I will be talking about my points of weakness. Hey, hey, I will, I will tell them my points of weakness can it matter time and why I tell them. You know, my time management was weak and how to solve the problem. If they tell me rate yourself, be honest, give yourself a good rating, or say the reason behind it. That would make it really strong. And I say, for example, I would give myself eight out of 10. They might ask you, why are you giving yourself eight out of 10? Why not five? I will explain, but so I will give. Then I go to my answer with evidence. So be sure to support the evidence. And uh, yeah, that reminds me of another rule, which is don't mention something that you can't explain. Yeah, and you don't say nothing. Uh, they ask you about your hobbies. So you say, I love reading very much. I'm not starting an interviewer asked you, what's your favorite book? One what are you are going to say? You are him open how you come in the middle of forum. You will ah, I love reading Shakespeare. And I is very I is that would fear. Back in the HR interviewer has put by the HR interviewer. Let's say he studied English literature and he asked you, What do you like for Shakespeare? I have a mock of a king. وممكن تفلت منك تاني فانت تقول اي حاجه فيه بس تقول روميو اند جوليت طلع قاريها وقال لك اه اوكي سو تيل مي سمثينج سيجنيفيكانت يو لافد اباوت روميو اند جوليت خد بالك فروم فولو اب كويستشنز بيكوز دي كان كورنر يو دي كان كورنر يو جيف انسرز اون وات يو كان اكسبلين Begin. Okay, Doctor. If you just had the answer, I can't clear the spelling. The last question: If you have two offers, how he can apologize to the other? You will apologize for uh, the offer that you don't want by uh, mentioning that you are not comfortable. Was one of the elements of the offer. Yani the offer has salary, has transportation, has working days, has environment, has rules and responsibilities, rules and regulations, policies. You will reply back by saying, uh, I strongly apologize for the opportunity because I feel quite uncomfortable with one of the elements in the offer. Yes, it's a very polite rejection, very nice, professional. But actual offer and you are you did not show who responded. You give a reason behind your apology. And I would say a very nice add to that email, apology email. I look forward to working with you in the future, in different circumstances. Jamila, يعني, maybe يبقى في نصيب بالعربي كده. It's it's again polite. It's uh, it's warm. It's out of etiquette. Thank you, doctor. Now we can start the game. Okay, and let me show my screen. So, اوكي يا جماعه اهو الكود هنبعته دلوقتي حالا على الـ على الشات بوكس والواتساب جروبس قدامكم دقيقتين عشان تريجستريت في الجيم
the pool it was right now all right so let's start during the interview i should highlight my skills Sure, true. You always highlight your skills. You don't highlight your certificates. You don't highlight uh, your or uh, your just your education. You just highlight your skills. I should say bad comments on my previous job to let it or hire me. Sure, false. Because this way, uh, you it will not be nice to the HR person, and he will not hire you. He will understand that you are always backstabbing. 
other people, backstabbing, which means saying bad comments on people you leave or any organization that you quit. And let's go next one. I shouldn't mention any weaknesses. Once you can say weaknesses for sure, but you should always say how you are going to deal with those weaknesses, how you are going to overcome them, and how you are going to turn them into points of strength. If I'm asked about salary, I should say a small number. Once you always try to, if you say a small number, you are going to be inexperienced and at the same time, don't make it too dreamy and too hard. So always try to get enough information about the range of salaries in that position and keep it within the range or a little bit higher than the range. So keep it always reasonable around the range. I should ask you questions at the end of the interview. Sure, you should ask some questions at the end. It shows that you are not stressed and you would like to leave quickly. It shows that you would like to know more about the job and it shows that you care about details, you care about training, you care about equipment to do your job in a better way and so on. I should call the HR after the interview to ask about the decision. Course of arms, never try to contact the HR or send them an email after the interview because it shows that you can't find a job and you like the job very much, which most likely they are, going, are not going to like it and they might put you under more pressure. Let Great. Well done. Okay, and let's go back. And yeah, thank you so much for today. So that was the end. And for one more time, that's my email at any time. I'll be very happy to reply. That's my Facebook account if I would like to communicate informally. And that's my LinkedIn if you would like to uh, have some business talks. And thank you very much. That was really nice to have you over those three days. I hope it was an added value. I hope I opened your perspectives a little bit on professional life and what you are going to face just after graduation. And my advice, don't be scared. I'm a graduate at, at, at a point in life. Everyone, even if you find someone who is 100 years old, he was a fresh graduate at one time. So don't be scared. They are all stations and you are, you are going to move through those phases like any other one. So don't just be scared. Go into life 
jump into professional life, go into trainings, uh, read a lot, uh, watch YouTube videos about your personal life and how you deal with colleagues, communication skills and so on, and you will find your personality and how you are being ready to professional life is getting better and is getting improved in China. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa, for your efforts. Uh, and now uh, we can ask you if we can take a group picture by opening the camera. Yeah, sure. Yeah. شباب معلش ناخد بس صورة فممكن نفتح الكاميرا دلوقتي. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. شباب لما هنبدأ ناخد الصورة هنبلغكم تمام بس الناس عشان الناس كلها تفتح بس الكاميرا.